Welcome back to uh, the session, to the actual session. So no more keynote, only view slides, which is a good thing. I hope you can uh, see and hear everything. So web components without framework, productivity, speed, and independence. And actually, this is what I'm doing this year, particularly. Uh, and uh, in some larger projects and smaller projects is actually what I showed you today is I would say 80% of the web stuff I'm usually doing. Okay, so uh, first I enjoy Java, but what's uh, also true is that uh, the, long, the longer you wait, the, the more JavaScript becomes like Java and vice versa, of course. But JavaScript is really, really uh, very similar to, uh, to, um, to Java already, JavaScript to Java. So, okay, um, so I've written, I've written from time to time some blog posts, just a notepad, not to forget things, online workshops, if you like to come, uh, virtual, not to come, just virtual workshops. And um, AX Life is um, exactly like this. No, it takes no a whole day. We hack together stuff. And uh, my podcast and uh, what a podcast. Um, I just invite people and, and speak. Like for instance, uh, Marcus Ked about MicroStream. So we um, invite people and we chat about Java and and web and stuff. Okay. So now the first relevant slide is uh, the approach. What I would like to show you today is ES6 with CSS3 plus then a browser API with web components. I sometimes call it web standards. The question is, what is a web standard? I would say whatever you will find on Mozilla Developer Network is somehow a web standard, it's good enough. And um, for us Java developers, Java doc is like uh, MDN. Um, and uh, what I don't like in web is too much magic. So we don't need on NPM transpilations, no transpilation, no transpirations, right? <laughs> on the developer machines. And this is what I would like to show you today. Okay, and, and if you like uh, 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 standards, then probably the second day is the, the best one for you. We are hacked a microphone that's with web components the entire day. It's December. Okay, ah, if you have any questions left, forget about that. Then please uh, join first Monday of the month and uh, just ask questions. So this is like almost like Java user group without, you know, who's just asking and answering a question. You don't even have to register. Okay, this is basically it. And um, all the materials and examples are already pushed to uh, Adam Bean Airhex. So you will find here the examples from the prior session. And uh, what I will do is create a folder called web components. You will find it here. Please clone it in the next days, otherwise, or otherwise, I will delete it properly uh, next week. So, okay, so I can actually close the slides and then start with a small project and show you what I'm actually doing usually. So I set up web standard project uh, and don't worry, it just copies three files, which are more or less empty, but I do it a lot for proof of concepts. I created a small shell script and uh, how to call it JCon, of course, JCon. So what happened behind the scenes, it started browser sync. So, and uh, what browser sync is, is a small tool browser, browser sync, browser sync. And uh, what browser sync does, it uh, reads the files, listens to changes and pushes uh, the changes to the browser. So that's the only thing which is already pre-installed. And for that, of course, you use NPM, but uh, yeah, afterwards, no more. And, um, and then what I have on the, uh, let's see, on the right side is Visual Studio Code. Okay, that's basically it. And um, what I uh, have here is an index HTML and uh, nothing else, and a, a CSS, which is empty. And the index HTML, this is actually the hello. So if I do this, it, uh, yeah, it feels like Quarkus or Helidon, but with browser. Okay, now what I would like to do right away, because of time, I would like to activate modules. With that, we get basically Java packages in browser. So all the you know, required JS and all the other modules are no more needed. What, uh, what actually, we got a standard called ESM, ES6 modules. So this is basically it. Now, so what I can do here, I would say class, um, let's say hello, extends HTML element. Now the question is from where I know that is, there is something like an element. And the answer is because, uh, let's do this here. There is a nice, uh, for instance, what I do is I search for MDN, for instance, HTML element, right? So this is my search. I find it here and it describes what it actually is, the inherit strategy, inheritance, um, hierarchy, not strategy, and uh, what it actually does. So um, prior to the pandemic, if I spend some time in trains and airports, so devdocs.io was a thing, or still is actually, 
it, it provides me the entire documentation uh, offline. So I can search for HTML element, it's completely free, and I get hopefully the same results. So this is a full text searches, the same experience as Javadoc, just in browser. So what, what we basically do, we just you know, focus on that and nothing else. And this is actually great because this is a standard of browser APIs and they almost never change. Okay, so now we have that. And now let's create the component and uh, then use it. So let's see. So um, there's a custom elements define and then uh, J hello. There has to be a dash and hello. And J stands of course for JCon. So then I have here connected, connected callback and uh, close that. And here this in HTML and I use a text block. So multi-line string, what we also have in Java and just say h2 hello jcon. So now you see nothing, but uh, in a second, hopefully it's going to work better. J hello, I think it was. And now you see hello jcon. So this was the first web component. So of course um, you can I can build another one and we can input stuff and export stuff. But you know what usually happens is after one hour attendees ask me you no. Know, but this is just a toy. What if you would like to have, for instance, a, a router, right? So uh, the the good uh, the, the 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 good story is there is a nice router and probably you already know it. It says Vadin router, Vadin router, and um, it is um, another web component which you can use. And this is, um, you have to do this to install the router. So let's try to install the router. So let's do this. How to install the router. So what I usually do, this happens on, uh, so we have the JCon project and this happens on uh, Jenkins usually, but in my particular case, no Jenkins. So let's do it uh, here. I would like to create a folder dependencies switch to dependencies, npm i uh, in it, in it, in it, and minus y means don't ask me questions. And I would like to install the Vadin router. And we'll pull the router and install it here. And uh, why I'm doing this, uh, there will be no problem with Vadin router because it already has ESX modules. Well, what can happen that you get some legacy old JavaScript libraries, which, uh, and you would like to transform them to the new standard work and this is what I show you how to do. So we have the uh, the router and then let's say what I also would like to do is to have uh, uh, install dev mode snowpack. I hope hopefully is this. So what snowpack is is a standard tool which uh, is uh, built on standard tool means it builds on standards something like Maven but it understands the ES6 modules and um, I don't have to install, but with that, it is faster. Um, so what happened here, we have package JSON, which is basically like Maven. And we see here, dev dependency snowpack, and we have one built or compile time scope dependency called router. What I also would like to do is to save time, I would like to install lit HTML, and because I would need it in a few minutes, so it's faster to do it everything at once. And let's say uh, I just need it all the time, but, uh, we, Redux is a viable dependency, and uh, this is basically it. So let's keep that. So now, if I do uh, npx uh, snowpack, nothing will happen. And because what I forgot is a JS. What I have to tell, you know, I would like to have this dependency. So how how to how to get them? So uh, first, we just need a little bit more space. I will just copy this because uh, seems like useful. So I will open another editor here, go to index.js and I say, I need a router. So this is my import. What I also would like to do is just switch here to uh, lit HTML. And here I need something from lit HTML. And then uh, what else? Uh, it's, oh, Redux, why not? Redux.js. And the Redux JS is like, I'll show you what it is later. So, um, but uh, in larger project you need it in our small hello world is not necessary at all, but it's more serious. Because usually people ask, you know, what are you doing then with external dependencies and, and how to manage them? 
So what I did, I defined whatever I need, and this is actually already 80% will be used in projects. So again, we could use Moment.js on 3D, 3D, uh, yeah, 3D data-driven documents, uh, JS, something like that, but not a lot more. So now we have that, and now I will retry npx uh, snowpack. And uh, what happens is, as you can see, it just searches for the dependencies and creates a standard dependency uh, which is basically six, I don't know, 50K. So everything I need is 50 kilobytes because there are no images yet, but uh, I mean, this is all, all I need. And all the dependencies are in web module. So this is actually the great stuff. So what happened is all the third party dependencies were copied to web modules. And we have here Vadin router. This is just one uh, JavaScript class. So this is, I don't know, 1000 lines of code probably. And uh, then we have uh, lit HTML, which is also uh, 1000 lines of code with Java doc and stuff like that. You can minify that if you like, of course. And we have Redux, which is a little bit smaller, but we have basically three JavaScript classes. So it's like 600 li lines of code with lots of JS doc. There's nothing transformed. It's just now it's usable. Okay. Okay. So hopefully it will work. So what I plan to do is, it's a little bit tricky, but uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, I would like to create here a web component and call it hello. Do it the Java way, hello JS. And here I would like just to pick this here in uh, here, hello JS, and I will have to import the component. And this works like in Java with hello.js. So we have the uh, we have the component here, and it still works. So if I Skip this. It shouldn't work, right? Yeah. So it uh, it works. So we have the hello JS, and this is like my app, and this is the first component. And what I would like to do is have another component, copy, and paste. And this would be like uh, how to call it JCon, JCon JS, and this is uh, very good. So JCon JS. So this is going to be the jcon component, which is uh, here, jcon, jcon, and jcon, and here, jcon, and the other one is hello. So now we can distinguish between them. So we have two web components, and what we would like to do is to route between them, right? So this is the big deal. And uh, this component is mounted here. So what I would like to do is, I would like to have here output, this is just HTML tag and call it slot or just three dots. So, okay, works. Now, app.js is here. And now let's take a look at the router. Where is my router? Uh, small and powerful router. So actually th that's all I need. So I would like to do this and the router is from, so now the only thing is I have to use the path and uh, uh, what I forgot to do is <laughs> very important. I have to copy the stuff here over. So usually what happens in, in, in serious projects, um, all the files we need, they are pushed to a central web server and we just refer via URI. There is no central web server, so I just copy over to my project. And this was in depths, I think, web modules. So copy everything uh, to JCon source, hopefully. Let's see. Perfect. So now a Vardin, what is Vardin and router, router.js. Okay, so now uh, we can close that hopefully and uh, just open that and forget about Redux. So what what means here, um, I would like, so this is the old way, what you can do is document uh, query selector and output. I would like to attack output. So why? Because I would like to have this one. And um, then in app.js, I can say, okay, if there is a root, I would like to load and let's say jcon. And then if I use the uh, users, uh, and I think, So document query selector output, then we have the outlet jcon and let's say hello, hello. Uh, not sure about that, wait a second. Uh, what this is, this is named import and the router, is, I think this is right. 
what I forgot to do is I also need the uh, JCon. JCon. As you can see, already works JCon. And so this is JCon, or this is hello. And forget about all the special special cases. Means in case some, someone uh, uses the slash, it comes to JCon, and the hello it comes should come to hello. And uh, this was I think J hello was the name of the component. Let double check that hello J hello should work. Now what you need is some links, and uh, so then go with the links. So uh, what we uh, can do, as so, really nice links would be, I'll just forget about nice links. Uh, I would like to have A two times. And the first time is um, nothing, nothing. And the nothing is, what was it? Uh, JCon. And then we get the hello. We get the hello. And this should be hello. This is basically it. And a little bit of room. And uh, just do this without CSS. So, uh, and then we have this and this. So this was routing. So you can ask, okay, this was all fine, but uh, what I would like to do is, uh, what if, you know, we have some more uh, more sophisticated components like, you know, date picker. And um, so this uh, Java, we are enterprises. So what you would like to do is, I would like to pick something from SAP. And um, actually, I, uh, this is already in the, not show notes, in the repository or the links I gathered for you. I just opened them. So, and this is this UI5 web components. So this is um, open source project from SAP. And uh, what's really impressive is for instance, the date picker. And uh, so this is the date picker. And uh, to use the date picker, I will have to install the web components. And um, how to do that is get started. So what I will have to do is, I will have to use the web component. So install the web components in my dependency. So do this. By the way, if you have any questions, just ask. And uh, I will try to answer as many questions as possible. So I will install all the web components again, then open the index.js and say, I would like to have the date picker. So, and then open here the dependencies and say, I'm only interested in the date picker where were the here. And for that, I will have to check I hope so. What I would like to do is to use the not button rather than date picker. Perfect. And um, this is just for the for the for the build process. Okay. Now uh, npx snowpack snowpack and hopefully it works. Would be nice. And it works. So it created, you know, in the strange folder, but for time reasons, we just keep it. And um, this is a larger because all the theming and CSS and so forth came with the component. So um, I would just do the same. So where is my, uh, yeah, I would just copy it again. And now I get hopefully UI5 date picker here with a strange, uh, but just keep it. Usually, you know, I'm working cleaner, but this is uh, a session and we have just 45 minutes. So now, uh, what I would like to do is to integrate the date picker, let's say in the JCon, you know, to schedule the next JCon. And um, how to do that? Well, we have import. So what I could do, I can say import statement and say, I would like to have UI5 uh, web components. This was this and date picker. And uh, this is actually, I don't need that. I only have to load the component. And now um, I can say, okay, uh, nice, but uh, I actually would like to use that. And I have, I forgot, okay, the tag, this is the tag I would like, I have to choose. So let's go here and say, just use it here. Okay, so now if we switch to back to root, you see, we already have the SAP component. The problem of course is, um, I would like you know, to, to listen to the changes here. And this is not that easy. So for that reason, I would use lit HTML to listen easier for the events. For, with that, I will have to use something like this, query selector and, and, and go to the date picker, which is not very productive. So um, instead, I would like to import a statement and this is going to be lit HTML. And what I would like to do is HTML and render. And this is not only more convenient, it is a lot faster and safer. So um, for that purpose, just prepend HTML. 
And this is object, which is true because uh, actually uh, const uh, template, what we get back is a template. And now I can say render should be the same result as before, but a little bit faster and save up. So it's the same result. But now what I can do, I can say, hey, cool. Uh, but what I would like to see is a change equals. And then here I say, okay, I would like to have an event which says on new jcon, jcon, and this is the event. So, and then I can say on new, on new jcon and pass the event and then say uh, just console log and the event, event. So, and then, um, so if I just open the console here, Oh, uh, the warning is just because the internationalization. So um, there, there is searching for assets, which I didn't copy it. Um, they, uh, I would have to you know to transpile the assets as well. So, okay. So now if I switch here, you see, I get, you know, my custom event and uh, a custom event has a detail inside detail. So what I can use is the structuring. I say, I'm actually only interested in the detail detail and inside the detail, I think there's the value and what interests me is just the value. So go ahead with the value, 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 and then say, okay, this is the uh, 7th October. And I think the next, uh, the next JCon is going to be probably not in January rather than in, I don't know, in uh, 20th October. So, okay, so now it works. But now it's say, okay, I don't like SAP. What about, um, what about for instance, uh, Vardin? So, well, what Vardin does, it also, also comes with built-in web components. Um, and um, let's see, I think I also prepared those so close date picker and UI5. And what I would like to do is, this is the uh, building blocks is the Vardin components. What you see here is a date picker from Vardin. And this is the Vardin without the JavaScript, uh, sorry, Java counterpart. This is just the web stuff here. So, um, okay, so install. So we need some install again, some NPM probably. And you see here, NPM uh, I Vardin date picker. So great, just do, do this in my dependency. So just do it here. So it will download the Vardin dependency. Again, this usually happens on Jenkins, not on developer machines. But um, so, and then we have, um, then we can go to the overview. Forgot the import. So the import is, let's see what the, uh, let's run it. And uh, it is going to be date picker. So, um, so what we can do, we can say import. We only have to import that and say uh, body and date picker. <laughs> so this was easier than you know find this in the documentation. So uh, hopefully it will work. Now N npx uh, snowpack again, snowpack, and hopefully it will pick the date picker. Now it. Uh, spends a little bit more time because it tries to find commonalities between the libraries. And uh, so we got Vardin date picker. So, um, okay, so let's copy the Vardin date picker over. And uh, we have the uh, date picker Vardin here. And what I, let's see, uh, what we can do is crazier. So what I would like to do is, is a little bit, just go to JCon and I would like to integrate another date picker on the same level as the SAP UI5 date picker. So let's see whether this works. So uh, for this purpose, just uh, import, import, and what I have to do is just to use uh, Vardin, then uh, Vardin date picker, this is basically it. And I only have to load it. I don't have to know what's inside, just load the picker. And then pick the picker. <laughs> Pick the picker and see whether it works. So, uh, oh, wrong placement. So and the picker should be here. So and now we have a wonderful SAP date picker with even better Vardin picker. 
in my uh, no framework setup where I can just you know pick libraries. Why it works? Because both pickers are relying on sh uh, shadow and uh, on the shadow root, um, shadow DOM and shadow root, and therefore it works. So they don't you know mess with these with my CSS. And of course, what I could do, I could also use this, but I believe the, the event is a little bit different. So let's go a new, uh, let's see whether it's different or not. So it is, you see, cannot read property value, reason being, I think in Vardin there is no detail. So let's go here on, on Vardin JCon. So you cannot expect that there are two complete different web components. And uh, what we already have, we have a lit HTML library, we have a Vardin date picker, SAP UI5 date picker, and a router um, in 25 minutes from scratch. Um, so we have then, this is the uh, event. And I think, I think it is value. Let's see, uh, a little bit brave on new JCon. This was Dardin, uh, Dardin, Vardin. And then go here, console log value. Okay, and a label would be a uh, new JCon. So we have new JCon, and then if I switch here, we, and you see, oh, you see nothing, undefined, uh, and target, target target is the classic. This is the classic, uh, let's see, target. Okay, target, something happens, and then, then target value will properly work. This is like the normal JavaScript approach. And uh, let's see, and we have the Vardin output. So what we did right now, we in, uh, integrated, um, so we actually separated the, um, the third party libraries from, from the application, which is good because in a micro front ends world, what you usually would like to do is to have you no know, shared components among all the front ends. Otherwise you will reload the same framework over and over again to all the web components. And the only difference to real world is what I would usually do is I would use here an URI and not uh, refer to our local file system. But for now, I think it's good enough. So um, any questions, I guess, no questions, right? Or we have questions, everything crystal clear. So you are going to delete the frameworks after the session, your frameworks. Um, okay, now what if, let's say, so let's go here with the JCon and the hello, and the hello is still not a lit HTML component. So what I would like to do is I would like to um, use here lit HTML, oh, lit HTML as well, lit JS, exactly. And what I need is HTML and render and uh, just two functions. And this is HTML, HTML. And this was again, the idea with the, with the uh, template. So just go here. And uh, I would like to template to run the template here. And then if I switch to JCon or hello, it's just hello. This was this. Okay, I mean hello. Okay, it seems to work. So this is my uh, my template. Let's let's say I would like to load a third party or third party. I would like to JSON here and um, and then create some JSON. What do we have here? Or we can just use this JSON. I just copied it over with some imports. So let's reuse this J JSON import import map JSON. This is what I would like to lo load. So then uh, load map and uh, just do it async. Then uh, I'll wait, fetch. And this was, uh, what was it? Import map.json. And this is the uh, response. And then I would like to have response JSON, which is an asynchronous call again, but I can wait for the result. So this is all. And then uh, just take a look at the structure. This was imports and let's say imports with HTML. So what I can do is I can just destructure this again. And this will work with const and then const and then um, imports. And then I think we saw lit HTML, right? Hmm. 
lit HTML and with the JSON. Ah, this is, um, and we have to use different syntax. Uh, let's go with the Redux, too lazy. With the Redux, there's no dash allowed. Redux. And uh, this. Okay, and then output that console log. Uh, Redux. And this we, you can use. Um, like we we got uh, built-in templates like you know a string format in Java, and here I can say uh, where is Redux. Okay, so we have it, and I, I would like to call it. So for that purpose, uh, just create a button, just ordinary button, and the button is a click. So it has a click handler, and the click handler has um, has. I don't care about the event. I would all, only like to load the map, and now it should work so try that so and then we have uh hello and this is the button load from server and uh so jake load from server and what you see where is redux redux it seems to work so um this was actually a standard api fetch is already in the browser so you can very easily load um, HTT with HTTP JSON from the server. And what we did here, we destructured the object. So what it means is we extracted interesting data. So um, if I took, took a look on import map, you see imports and Redux. So imports Redux, and this is like the reverse process. So there's an imports and Redux, and uh, here is my Redux. Okay, so now, um, what's what's the uh what's the uh, redux so what the redux is so first is the uh, the smallest of all libraries and in larger projects um there's an idea that you know um uh, you get a uh, uh, lots of views and the views have to communicate some somehow with each other and uh the uh, redux is the following idea what you will usually do is you will instantiate so-called store the redux store and with the Redux store, it will contain the entire state of the entire application. So it means it will be a tree of objects, you know, JSON of JSON of JSON of JSON. Uh, and um, what uh, will happen is any change to the Redux store will cause re-rendering of all components. So this is the basic idea. So whatever happens in the store, it is going to be, to be, uh, to be um, pushed to the components. And what you will have to do is just to re-render the entire state. Now it comes the... Uh, the 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 uh, clever story or the good story. The lit HTML recognizes the changes, and even if you re-render the component, it will only re-render parts which really changed, which is good for performance. Okay, what I showed you right now are a framework from uh, a framework a library, a web component library. It's not a framework; you can just pick and choose libraries from Badin. Another one from SAP, and what you can also do is um, can show you some more. So this is the Vadin, which comes with a lot of uh, nice components. You can just pick and choose, and you can style them using um, custom properties. So um, this was the tool I called, or I use Snowpack. What Snowpack does, it uses, um, it is a standard tool which just searches for standard imports, and it can do something with it. So we could minify the entire project if you if you like with Snowpack. So we, we installed everything from scratch. So you saw how Snowpack operates. So just like in Java, you convention of a configuration, the same we have in the front end, so you don't have to do anything. Then Rollup is used behind the scenes. You can use Rollup standalone. If I use Snowpack, it already uses Rollup behind the scenes. So all the source code, again, is going to be here in the... Uh, um, no, this is a uh, sample application. This is a different. So I um, uh, wanted to, to show you later, but as web components with Redux is a more serious application. If you take a, would like to take a look, take a look on that. Uh, this was the router. This is a standalone component. And what the uh, router does, you can uh, route between components, sub routes, 
What it also comes with a life cycle. So it will call you in case you know, on route, before route, and so forth, which is very good. For instance, for uh, for um, checking you know the um, the user permissions. So you can only route to a specific location if the user is allowed to, for instance. And um, but it's not a big deal to to build your own router. So basically, what you have to know there's a hash change event, and uh, with hash change event you can build your own router um, because you can replace you know uh, you can you will listen to the to the um, address address bar and on any change you will just uh, initiate the route. Uh, then there are UI5 web components. We, this is from SAP, and we picked the um, the date picker from there. And um, what else? This is the Redux, and the Redux is probably one of the simplest libraries uh, in Java. We could explain um, Redux as a singleton, which contains uh, a a hash map of hash maps inside, and we can register uh, register functions called reducers on what uh, this is like a Java Java function apply which gets one hash map back and returns another hash map. And inside the function, we uh, implement uh, the logic that that's the idea. And um, yeah, so, and, and the trick is the entire state is in the store. So, uh, which is really convenient for more cl complex applications. In our case, it doesn't matter. And this lit HTML, what we used is the reminder of, uh, of Polymer uh, framework from Google. This actually comes from Google, but has uh, lots of, um, Lots of alternatives. By the way, um, the question is no. Uh, um, um, I, I um, did a lots of you no know, advertisement like you know no dependencies. Uh, the, the question is always you know what happens if lit HTML disappears? Then we get a very similar library called Viper HTML, for instance, which almost operates the same. Why is this the case? Because if you take a look at the um, on, on our component here with the uh, where was it here HTML. So the HTML is actually so-called um, ES6 function literal. So we can, and what, what happens here is um, the lit HTML is just a function with the name HTML and JavaScript knows about that and passes you know, all the placeholders in the entire string to this function. So this is considered lit HTML as a standard extension from JavaScript, not like you know, a, a, a magical framework uh, and, and uh, with some you know, code generation behind the scenes. No, it's just very simple actually. And, um, Okay, so this was lit HTML. Then um, what uh, also happened is, this is uh, uh, one year ago, Apple shipped uh, the uh, Apple Music with web components, but they used a framework called Stencil behind the scenes to create the web components. Um, so what's also interesting, because uh, there is an ING web components and the ING web components called Lion web components and why they are so interesting is because the Lion web components, let's see, Lion, uh, Lion, actually, I, I thought I opened them. They looked a little bit boring for a reason. They are not uh, branded. So you can actually use here whatever they have, you know, input amount. And this web component looks boring, but you can, you know, it takes a little bit. It's like, seems like a you know, serverless app until it loads. And it um, it is just unbranded. It looks boring, but you can completely style it, which is um, more more viable for enterprise. So it looks like that. So it's, it's actually fairly simple. So this is ING line web components. What else? Uh, the dev docs, what I showed you. So this is a great way to search, for instance, for fetch. So I show you the fetch. So what is the fetch API? You will find you know how to use the fetch API and the dev docs IO. Dev docs IO. Um, it is able to cache or to, to um, download the docs uh, for offline search, which is great. Browser sync, we already learned about that. So this is the only tool I, I actually created up front. And um, it's the version two something and um, two six, I think. And what browser sync does, it scans you know constantly your source tree and pushes all changes to the browser. What's interesting, it pushes to all the browsers. They can actually open multiple browsers. And this is like, uh, like uh, it will synchronize the browsers for you, which is very good, uh, great for testing. So um, some developers don't like Java uh, or they love framework. So there is a gift for them. There is a vanilla JS. So what it is, is just a fake framework. So there is nothing. It will now check everything here. What you will download an empty zip, but as you can see, zero byte uh, compressed. So whatever you checked in here, this is nothing, but it's just a fake, it's an old site. So it has to be, should be actually uh, refactored. You see, everyone uses vanilla JS, and what it is, it is nothing. <laughs> just um, 
just fun. So another great framework is from Adobe, actually, uh, framework component libraries called Spectrum Web Components. They are also based an, on lit HTML. And uh, and this lit element is like, you know, lit HTML with a little bit more syntactic sugar. So in all my projects so far, I always use only the uh, lit HTML because this is more dependency. And, uh, but uh, no, uh, let's take a look at the action button. There is immediately an example. So it is like, you know, SP button group on whatever. And you always get, you know, this dash. This is one of the, you have to use the dash in order to deploy a web component. So there is no, no dash, no web components. And why, you know, uh, not to accidentally, you know, overwrite already existing tag. Therefore, the standard browser tags don't have the dash, only web components bring, you know, the dash with them. Okay, so we covered that. And now, any questions? Yes, we have a few questions in the chat. Very good. So, um, on the chat. So yeah. let's... First one, um, what's the advantage over Angular React solutions? Oh, uh, what is the advantage? There are basically no migrations. And what you, uh, for, for me as developer, I what I showed you right now, it won't change in the next years. So learn once, never migrate. And um, huge projects, for instance, React, React is not that problematic, but as you probably know, Angular um, has two, some, two major versions a year and the uh, major 11 is on the horizon. And uh, lots of projects still with uh, version nine. And this is already advice to the, to the projects that you will have to migrate from nine to 10 and from 10 to 11. And um, for me, not a problem at all. For larger companies, they become, they, they, they have no less and less, they are less and less motivated to upgrade the frameworks. The question is what can happen? I don't think that um, Angular on a framework will break in production. What can happen is, that uh, your build won't run if you wait too long. That's the actual problem. So that if you have a you no know, security issue or security problem in production and you would like to rebuild your framework and you waited for too long, you will spend several hours until your build kicks in. In my case, there is no, no build. So the advantage is actually what I showed you right now is there is nothing what I showed you. So there is no framework at all. So the, my advice is just, you know, um, I'm pretty sure that the frameworks become less relevant over time. So start just, Try without framework, and then you know, um, if you if you see that this is not not productive, then you can just uh, use framework again. And back to React, if you would watch the code I wrote today and compare it to React, this is very very similar. Very good. So another one: mm -hmm. uh, Is it possible to convert legacy jQuery components to web components? Oh yeah, and this is actually a very good trick. For instance, uh, tabulator info. So tabulator info, come on, load. This tabulator info is a great uh, table. I think it's based on jQuery or, uh, or on, on DOM. Um, let's see. Okay, better. So tab, uh, tabulator info, if you take a look, it is just plain, um, plain JavaScript code. And what we already did, We've wrapped that with a web component and uh, shipped to production. So actually, I worked with jQuery developers, and uh, web components are a great way to reuse ex uh, um, um, existing jQuery widgets because you have complete control of what happens. And uh, with uh, web components, you can absolutely do that. With frameworks, not so because uh, you have to know, you know, what is the lifecycle of the framework? Does the framework use Virtual DOM or not? And we just use you no know, bare metal or bare DOM. Okay, perfect. And the last one, um, mm -hmm. what is uh, the future of JSF development if web components go mainstream? Oh, a web components in JSF is complete different architectures. So uh, web components is more like Fed client. So you would compare you know, uh, web components to Java of X-Wing or something like that. And JSF is server side, service, uh, server rendered framework and web components are uh, just a Fed client. You can build, you know, um, Actually, uh, this week we will build uh, as a proof of concept an offline app, which will just sometimes need a server, but with web components, which is impossible with JSF. So future of JSF depends on the fashion, I would say. But uh, having said that, we still uh, use JSF for back office applications. They are crazy productive. So you can absolutely use JSF today. For pixel perfect, you know, offline apps, SPAs, JSF are just not suitable and never were. Or if you have a JSF also great if you have form-based applications. 
So you can still use JSF, but uh, you shouldn't combine JSF with web components. Interesting approach what Vadin did. So with Vadin, you can use uh, the JavaScript web components standalone, or if you use the Java approach, the web components are generated behind the scene anyway. So you have a uh, Java on the server and web components in the browser, and they are uh, they are data bound or synchronized. Other questions? No. Yeah. So um yeah. One yeah? One Very good. So can you read the chat because it's closed? Then two more. Just... Yeah. Um which library you can recommend for validation oh for validation uh, first uh, you can use the um, built-in uh, validation from uh, from html so um then you get you know like the re regular expressions and stuff like that and uh, if you need some more evolved uh, validation what will happen is you can listen to the changes and just validate it with straight javascript so um usually you will have um specific validation rules like you know bank account is i don't know address exists for instance there is no library for that very similar to java like we have you know the bin validation we get you know the stock validation which comes in html for free and if you need some cross validation in java we uh, cross attribute validation or cross feed validation we had to implement that by ourselves it's exactly the same here so no library so far but uh, you can use load dash you know like a simple simplistic uh, attribute checks or something like that So we have two more questions. What's uh, what's about scale, scalability? I mean, using it in a micro front-end approach and one team would like use with different technology. Yes, yeah, scalability micro front-end, I think this is the only way to go because what you will do with micro front is actually what we actually did in projects is what I showed you right now is, you know, here the import, what also exists is uh, import like that. So you could actually import here something. Let's do it here. So I can actually import uh, import hello. And with that, it is um, a, a, a wait. What I get back is the, um, is the imported element on demand. It's like reflection or class loading in Java. So with that, I could actually selectively uh, dynamically download web components, which basically are micro frontends. And if the web components, you know, share my common library, the entire infrastructure is going to be loaded only once. This is the, the cool story here. So this is almost impossible with frameworks because in this particular case, if you use framework, what can happen and actually will happen is that you get, you know, multiple versions of the same framework at the same time in production because everything is bundled together. With that, and with this approach from today, you can clearly, clearly separate the uh, infrastructure from the business logic. So, and one more last question. Um, are there any browser version limitations? Uh, no more, because all browsers compatible, custom elements are supported everywhere. So uh, the recent project we shipped without any polyfills. There are polyfills available for Internet Explorer 10, I think, or something like this. But this is, uh, this is no, more, no, more in, no more available, I would say. So, uh, no, uh, web components are available everywhere on all platforms right now. So whatever I showed you is actually old stuff. So it should run everywhere. So there are no more questions. One more. Which library frameworks you use for testing? Oh, um, Karma JS for unit testing and Cypress JS for end-to-end -end testing. It's completely compatible with that. And one more. Can I use web components with Vue.js? Yes, you, you can use uh, web components with everything. By a Vue.js, uh, a larger project, what do you have to know with, with Vue.js is the following. It's always uh, because I get lots of questions regarding Vue.js. If you're using uh, Vue.js, go to GitHub. This is one of my val validation. So if you go uh, Vue.js and you search for uh, contributors, where are they here? You will find that the Vue.js was mainly created by one guy. And a young guy who hopefully has enough and is stopped somehow developing. So in larger project, I will ask myself, you know, who will pick the work? So if the this guy, you know, will focus on something else 
and the view bot, I don't know what the view bot is doing, something is doing, and all the others are just, there are no commits, at least not recognizable. So this is about Vue.js. So this is also the truth of frameworks. Frameworks can disappear in one point of time. But um, to answer your question, uh, you can absolutely use, you can wrap Vue.js code with a web component, it will work. You can wrap Angular, React, or whatever uh, with web components. But uh, the cool story is you don't need a framework if you have web components, but you can you know, use web components and whatever frameworks you like. Thank you for watching. It was uh, fun. And uh, thank you for the invitation to JCon. So um, yeah, great conference. <laughs>